Today we're going to be graphing lines in slope-intercept form. So let's talk about slope-intercept form of a linear equation. And it looks like this, y equals mx plus b. This is our formula for slope-intercept formula of a linear equation. So what does all of these, what do all these variables represent? So the y value, that's obviously your output. And I'm going to go ahead and jump to the x value, which represents your Input. So those are your input and output values as they are in everything that we've talked about thus far. But something new are your m and your b values. Now you might recall from slope, the slope lesson, that that m variable does represent your slope. It's that number that's right in front of the x. It's the coefficient of the x. So slope, we also call this the rate of change. So if you're ever asked what's the slope of the line and you're given an equation or what is the rate of change, that means what is the slope. Now your b value, that might be something new for you if you've never seen this formula before, but that is the y-intercept. The y-intercept. And you might recall on a coordinate plane, this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. So what do you think a y-intercept is? It's where it crosses your y-axis, and it's just a number line. Positive numbers go up, the negative numbers go down. So let's look at this first little bit. It says write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form given the following information. So number one, when you're given a slope of 3 fourths and a y-intercept of negative two, what would that look like in an equation? Well, it would be y equals, your slope goes in front of the x, so 3 fourths, times x, and then your y-intercept is just your b value, minus 2. Let's look at number 2. If you have a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 4, what would that look like in your equation in slope-intercept form? Well, if your slope is negative 2, negative 2x, your slope is the number in front of the x. Your y-intercept is that b value all by itself. And because it's not a negative 4, it's a positive 4. So I'm just going to write positive 4. That becomes plus 4. Let's look at our next one. y equals, if I have a slope of negative 2 thirds, that goes in front of my x value. y-intercept of 1 or positive 1. Let's look at number 4. If I have a slope of negative 12, negative 12x, a y-intercept of negative one-half minus one-half. And now let's talk about actually graphing lines using slope-intercept form. So you're going to take these steps to graph. The very first thing you're going to do when you're given that equation is you're going to graph the y-intercept. That's that b value that we were looking at. You're going to graph it on your y-axis, which obviously this horizontal axis is your x-axis. This vertical axis is your y-axis. And then the next thing you're going to do is that y-intercept, that becomes your starting point. It's like, think of it as your new origin. And from there, you're going to use the slope, which is your rise over run, to graph additional points on the line. So, and given this first example, y equals 2 thirds x minus 1, let's first identify what our slope and y-intercept are. So your slope is the number in front of the x, that's two-thirds, and your y-intercept is all by itself right there, negative one. So the first thing we're going to do, step one, is graph our y-intercept. Well, if this is the number line on our y-axis, that's zero. If I go down, that is where negative one is, okay? So that, that origin right there is zero, zero. So the number line on my y-axis, I'm going to go down one. Then from there, I'm going to go up to, again, because it's rise over run, I'm going to rise to, and then I'm going to run one, two, three. Rise to and run three. And again, I would have a point over here, right here, because I could also rise to and run three like that. So it's consistent. It's a constant rate of change. So that's what we're going to do when we graph these next six examples in slope-intercept form. So let's look at number one. The first thing I'm going to do is identify what my slope is and what my y-intercept is. So the slope is the number in front of the x, 
which is one half, that's my rise over run, and then my y-intercept is positive six. So again, if you need to label your x-axis and your y-axis, the first thing I'm gonna do is graph my y-intercept. So I'm gonna start at zero and I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my y-intercept and I went up six because my y-intercept is positive six. Now that becomes my new starting point and from there, I'm gonna rise one and run two. And then from there, I'm gonna rise one and run two again. And because it's a constant rate of change, I can keep doing this all the way to the end of the graph. What I really like to do is keep graphing. I graph as many points as possible on my graphs that I'm drawing on just because I like to have very precise, nice, straight lines on my graphs. But really, you only need two points to graph a line. So once you graph two points, you can put a straight edge up to those points and graph it. But I could also go down one and to the left. Some students really struggle with the fact that I can do this. Rise one, run two, and it's all following on that line, so it works. What I really like to do is put a straight edge up to all these points. I can't really do it on this surface, but I'm going to connect them and make a line, and that's what my line looks like. Let's go to number two. I've got y equals 3 fourths x minus four, so I'm gonna identify my slope and my y-intercept. My slope is three over four, and my y-intercept is negative four. So what do I do first? I'm gonna graph that y-intercept. So again, x-axis, y-axis. Start at my origin, and I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four. There's where my y-intercept is negative four. My slope is positive three over four. Because that slope is positive, I automatically know that my line is gonna look like this. It's gonna rise from left to right, okay? So gonna be from, go from lower left to upper right. So if I graph it wrong and I know my slope is positive, I'm like, oh, using my eraser and I'm gonna regraph it because I graphed it the wrong way. But I'm gonna rise one, two, three, and then go over one, two, three, four. And there's another point that's on that line. Then from there, I can go one, two, three, and then over one, two, three, four. And likewise, if I wanted to go the other way, I could do the same, down one, two, three, over one, two, three, four. One, two, three, over one, two, three, four. Those are all points on this line. And then I'm gonna put my straight edge up to it. I'm gonna graph that line. Okay, let's move on to number three. Number three, so let's identify what our slope is and what our y-intercept is. So our slope is the number in front of the x. When you have a whole number or an integer like this in front of the x, a lot of students really like to put it over one because they want their slope, their rise over run, to be written as a fraction. And as you graph more, like the more you do this, the better you get, you automatically know any whole number integer is itself over one, but I can always write it as two over one, and then my y-intercept is positive one. So what am I gonna graph first? I'm gonna start at my origin, and I'm gonna go up one on my y-axis. There's my y-intercept, that's my starting point. Then from there, I'm rising two and running one. So from there, rise two, run one. Rise two, run one. Rise two, run one. Rise two, run one. And likewise, I can go the other way. Round two, over one, down two, over one. And I can graph as many points on this line as possible. Again, you only need two points. Put your straight edge up to those points and connect them. So let's move on to number four. Number four, this is our first example where we're gonna be graphing a negative slope. So our slope is negative one over two and our y-intercept is positive two. If it helps you to write x and y on your coordinate plane for your axes, that's totally fine. But what do I do first? I'm gonna graph that y-intercept. 
it's at positive 2. So I start at 0, 0, and I'm going to go up 2. Then from there, because my slope is negative, I know it's going to look something like this. It's going to go from upper left to lower right. It falls from left to right, if you will. So when I'm graphing this line, if I accidentally graph it and it looks like that, I graphed it wrong. I went the wrong direction. So erase it and just regraph it. I'm going to, I can go down one and over two. Down one over two. And I can just keep going down one and over two. If I wanted to fill this coordinate plane up with points, could I go up one and over two this way? Sure, up one and over two, up one and over two, up one and over two, up one and over two. I could keep doing that. Then put my straight edge up to it and graph the line. Oh my gosh, terrible, terrible graph. Okay, but that's what it looks like. And as you can see, when I zoom out, you can see one, two, and three all go from lower left to upper right, no matter the steepness. But then number four, clearly has a different type of slope. It's negative. So let's move on to our last two. Number five. Again, I have a slope that's negative. What is it? Negative two-fifths. My y-intercept is negative three. What do I do first? x-axis, y-axis. I graph my y-intercept at negative three. My slope is negative two over five. So I'm going to go down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I know my slope is negative, so it's going to look something like that. Already I can tell I went the right direction. Okay, so if you went this way and you graph those points, obviously you would have um, a slope that's positive, and so you know you went the wrong direction. But I can do that again, down 2 over 5. And likewise, I could go up to and over 5 this way and do the same thing. And then I can connect my points and my line would look like this. And if you need to pause the video, if I'm going too fast, too slow, whatever, just uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of having a tutorial video. You can kind of go at your own pace. Or if you catch on after like the first two examples, then awesome. So number six, this looks slightly different. I don't have anything right here. I don't have a plus or minus. Well, then what's my starting point? Your starting point is zero. So my slope is still, I can put that over one if you want, negative three over one, but my y-intercept is zero, which means I don't move up or down on my y-axis. I just start at zero, zero. That's my starting point. My slope is negative three. So rise three and run one. Change in y over change in x. So I can go down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. Likewise, I can go up three over one, over one, over one, and graph as many points on this line as possible. You only need two, but I like to put as many as possible on my lines or on my graphs, and then connect them to form a line. And that concludes your notes over graphing lines in slope-intercept form. I hope it was helpful.